Margaret ventures out on day 43 to investigate the food market for more supplies and ends up impersonating the zombies inside. Blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Sure, you're a lovely man. Mint candy. Mm, piece of candy. Oh my goodness, so much stuff. Instant popcorn. The food market is absolutely stocked with goodies and Margs can't resist stuffing her face with candy. She feels like a child. A gore-splattered, zombie-killing, hat-collecting, slightly insane child. In the back room of the food market, which is some kind of office, she finds a note on a desk. A little note here, found in the desk. Susan isn't in the office today. Said she'd come down with a bad cold. Everything's so slow here today. Where is everyone? Hmm. Well, I assume they're all dead. Margaret spends some time working on the two military trucks to improve her mechanics skill. They're both in good condition, but Margaret has Beatrice and she doesn't need either of them. She rips them apart for sweet, sweet experience. She's also looking for the mechanics book, which she promptly finds, and then ventures a little further into town towards this huge police station. I wonder if there's a bookshop in this town. I would really like the mechanics book to improve our... Oh my god, there's a bookshop literally right there. That is crazy. Okay, well, let's go check out that then. <laughs> Can't believe that. So silly. Have a little lollipop, Margaret. Crouch walking your way to the bookshop. There she is. Has to be a hardware shop here somewhere. Police station. Huge police station. Could be worth checking out. The station is totally trashed inside, and the moans of zombies echo around. But Margaret can't hear, of course, because she's still got her earplugs in. Margaret searches throughout the building for the armory, but when she finds it, she can't get into it, because she doesn't have her sledgehammer with her. Defeated by the metal bars, she checks out some of the desks for spare cigarettes and finds another note. Another note. It's over. 40 officers killed in action, 7 more missing in action. No news from headquarters or the feds. It's over. We're all doomed. Hmm. Just looking for cigarettes. Not that cheery news, thank you. It's 7pm, so Margaret leaves the station. She might be back for the armory another time, and heads back to Beatrice for a late dinner. Canned chili, mushroom and cow, cod, canned cork, cat, cat. And sardines stir fry. Does that sound delicious or does it sound disgusting? It's honestly it's kind of hard to tell. No, oh, Margaret is feeling a little depressed. This food will cheer you up. The canned chili mushroom and canned, canned sardine stir fry that you can't pronounce or say properly. This is going to make you feel like a million dollars. You just wait. Oh, she's still feeling a little sad. You know what that means, Margaret? It means you can get drunk. Very, very drunk. To celebrate... How many days is it now? A month and 14 days. A month and a half. Incredible stuff. 44 days. I think this won't actually be the 44th day because I'm awful. Absolutely atrocious at keeping count. But let's get yourself a lovely bottle of white wine. Cold. Straight from Beatrice's fridge. And drink the entire bottle. Hmm. And then you're going to drunkenly read about mechanics after that. Peacefully read, my little, my little Margaret. She's still feeling a little sad, even though she just drank the entire, uh, entire bottle of white wine. White wine always makes me feel very good. Oh my god, it's 10 o'clock. No wonder you're tired. I didn't realise that's how late it was. Go to bed. Put your book on top of the bugs. Mm, they seem to just slime straight through it. Or hats, of course. I really like this one, so this one's going to get pride of place, I think. Hanging on the edge of the television. On day 44, Margaret sets off again. On the hunt for more propane, primarily. And she doesn't go far until she finds the next intriguing target. Some sort of military compound. Oh, well, we got instantly distracted, but this looks like a military checkpoint. She parks up at the gas station just north of the target and picks up some goodies from inside, as well as checks out the garages out back. Oh my god, don't trust that... Don't trust that gym. God, everyone really hates gym. Margaret is clearly losing her mind a little bit as she's dealing with some visible walls and missing doors. Rather than give in to her hallucinations, she just walks away. Let me in! Yes, it's an old military compound, likely set up to house soldiers during the outbreak. It's teeming with the undead, and there's random furniture dotted around. Most of the rooms are empty. She stands in the courtyard and shouts, Hey, it's me, Margaret Stump, come eat my crowbar, and the undead stumble out. She deals with them promptly, and she is quite tuckered out after all that. Lovely. Sit in the car park, drink a cold soup. Rest your weary bones, Margaret. In a back room, she finds a note which gives her a hint of what the building once was. Hmm. Another notebook. Another note here. Dear Frank, if you find this letter, we hid here for a while. The army station on the bottom floor of the hotel have left. Only one truck is left. We're running out of food. 
I don't want to die in this cupboard. Hmm. Keeping these, collecting these, Margaret. Start a museum one day. Then she explores a little further, hopeful that she might find some evidence of Leslie somewhere inside. Unfortunately, the building is ruined. Any survivors here are long gone, or long dead. She hits the road again. Seems like something pretty bad happened in this building. They must have been held out here, and then some of the army was stationed nearby, and they all died horribly. Seems. Right, what's this? Are they trying to blow the place up? Is he trying to protect himself? Didn't work, whatever the case was. Oh. It's a little busy. Massive hospital. Margaret does not trust. Help us. Could be survivors here, though. But there's a hell of a lot of zombies. Oh my god. Whatever this town is, it's full of zombies. But she has to check that building, just in case there's a survivor there who might know about Leslie. Margaret, however, makes a terrible mistake. She drives right into the middle of danger. Mm. She hates driving down these small, dead-end tracks. Because... They are indeed usually dead ends. Oh man. You fight them off, Margaret. Hold your ground. Beatrice might be a beautiful bus, but she does not do well in dead ends. Margaret is quickly surrounded by zombies, and she needs to make a quick escape down the side of a building. The zombies flop over the fences, and Margaret is getting tired from all this ducking and weaving. Even worse, all her firearms in the trailer attached to Beatrice. Mm, that French that French tactic always scares me. She does eventually weave her way back to the bus, losing some of the Zeds in the woods. Margaret grabs her shotgun. Please, Margaret, that's not a good idea. Not at all. No. Don't do it. Oh, God. She fired the gun. Zombies pour in from every direction. It gets real hot. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh my god, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Oh my god, okay. Okay, stay calm, Margaret, stay calm. Stay calm. Oh my god, okay. I think we honestly just try and get out of here. Oh, first time start from Beatrice. First time start from Beatrice. Carefully navigate the trailer up the road. Carefully, carefully reverse. That's it, Beatrice. That's it. That's it. Nice and calm. Calmly does it. No, not like that. Margaret and Beatrice are not having fun. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Okay, Beatrice. Okay. Stay calm, girl. Stay calm. Just need to get you turned around. That's it. Okay. Okay, get your turn around nice and slow. Oh boy. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Right, we're getting out of here. Get me the hell out of here. It's okay, Margaret. Calm, 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 calm. Calm, 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 calm. Okay. Okay. All right then. If Leslie was on that survivor building and he almost got me killed like that, then. Wow. Okay. First of all, have a goddamn cigarette. That was so intense. Such an intense situation. You okay? I think she's okay. Am I okay? God, I don't know. She sits for a little while and waits for the shakes to go down. That was too close. Beatrice almost got chewed up and spat out by a zombie horde. One breakdown there and she was done for. Good job, Beatrice. Good goddamn job. You're the best bus in Kentucky. Margaret drinks a beer, then gives the wall of Beatrice a little kiss. Without her, Margaret would be dead. She falls asleep. On day 45, it's a day of rest and relaxation. Not only did she almost die yesterday, she's also underweight. She needs to do nothing and eat lots. A perfect day, really. First, she makes an absolutely massive stew and sinks it all in one big gulp. After eating, she wanders out into the peaceful woods and searches for berries and other goodies. Fresh food like mushrooms should get her nice and plump again. Margaret Plump. Hmm. Carrots. That's going to be great for your stew later, Margaret. Delicious carrot stew. Another slug to add to your collection, of course. It starts to rain, so she leaves the stew pot outside to collect some water. Then she plays with her bugs. Even if she doesn't want to, she must. Put our lovely jockey helmet down. 
we simply have to make you fat. Uh, let's put some more bugs on our table as well. Another slug. Well, Margaret doesn't seem to be enjoying the, the bug play very much. But Margaret, you're not in charge, are you? I am. You're crazy god. I am in charge. And you will play with those bugs if I make you. And then she eats a TV dinner. It's packed full of calories, exactly what she needs. Margaret, it looks delectable. Look, it comes in a little tray and everything. Tell me you haven't missed eating her. Okay, so now that was a calorific meal. I see. So we need stuff that was got more calories, like... Margaret reads for most of the day, then gets the pot from outside to make some delicious rainwater pasta. A stump delicacy enjoyed by her and husband many, many times on their adventures. She repairs the pasta and feels a sudden overwhelming feeling of loss. Where is her husband? Where is he? A tear trickles down her cheek and falls into the pasta water. Mmm, delicious. Now she's putting on weight again after eating literally 10 kilograms of pasta. Uh, we're just going to chill out in here. Actually, I need to check Margaret's, uh, Beatrice's battery and also see how beaten up she got in that escape. Ah, she's okay. Loads of battery left. Tires, uh, wheels are... Hmm. Not bad, but we've got fixer flat that we can repair it with. So, all good. All dandy, actually. Okay, let's read. In your cosy little home, Margaret. Cool. Half past nine seems like a very reasonable time to go to bed. On day 46, she grabs more scrumptious rainwater from outside and prepares another massive stew. Wow, we really are just sort of having a very peaceful existence, which I think is uh, good after all the chaos that we just went through. Just watching a cooking show with Margaret now. Zombie apocalypse. A zombie apocalypse, zombie apocalypse pooping with Margaret, is how she would say it, probably. The question is now, actually, one second, let's grab the cooking pot again. It's not every day that we get so much delicious rainwater to drink and eat. The question is now, do we go back into that cursed town? Let's have a look at the map, see if we went past any industrial buildings. Hmm. Not really. And it was pretty busy, wasn't it? Note some stuff down on our map here. Busy town, lots of dead, lots of action here. Used my shotgun, almost died. Well, you were okay, but yeah, I suppose you did, yeah. In which case, I think we probably take one more day chilling out, finish our mechanics book, I think. I'm just going to spend all day reading. It's raining, she had a rough time. Sit on the floor, just here, right here, and just read your book all day. Listen to the rain. After making some plans, she continues reading for most of the day. That mechanics book will be a massive boost to her experience, so she can finally repair Beatrice's engine. The rest of the day passes peacefully, with rainwater pasta and books in the back of Beatrice. Read until about midnight. You should be okay. Yeah. Day 47 is all about progress. She jumps behind the wheel while it's still slightly dark out, and begins the long journey to her next destination. Where that is exactly, she's not entirely sure, but she must keep moving. She continues on until she spots more and more zombies. There's a rest area here and she just passes what looked like a gun shop. Margaret stops and instantly regrets it. Well, there's stuff here. Why is it so busy? Why are there so many zombies here? I would like to stop here because I'm fairly certain there's a, uh, there's a gun shop here. If I remember correctly, Margaret remembers from her past life. It's quite a lot of zombies. Um... Hmm. Yeah, just a few then. Hmm. Seems to be... Oh my god, Margaret. Careful, focus, woman. There seems to be a slight running issue. Everywhere we go just seems to be slowly filling up with more and more zombies. She ducks, weaves, fires her shotgun, dum-dum, and decides that actually whatever is here is definitely not worth getting eaten alive by a thousand zombies. She hops back in Beatrice and gets the hell out of there. It's your unlucky day, mister. Let's get out of here. First time start from Beatrice again. That's my goal. Not worth it. Whatever's there is not worth dealing with that many zombies. I'll come back with a Molotov, I think. Let's keep going, Margaret. Once again, she doesn't need to drive that much further to find the next interesting location. Okay, then. S.O.S. Hello? Anybody here? Hello? Leslie? Hello? There were people here once, but they are all gone. Dead. 
zombified, or moved on to somewhere else. And definitely no Leslie. What's this big blue building? Ah. The bank. The bank is enormous. Margaret's footsteps echo eerily through the empty halls. She finds a note on the reception desk. There's another note here. Maureen told us to close the bank that there's some kind of illness going around. But I've got to work. Lucy's birthday is coming up and I need the cash. I'm sure it'll be fine. Awful quiet here today though. Only one single checkout all morning. Some guy came to collect a big duffel bag. Guns. From one of the lockers. Very quiet in here. What a weird place. Getting an uncanny feeling. Yeah, I don't like it. That corridor's giving me the heebie-jeebies. Look at it. She leaves the bank because it's giving big backrooms vibes and then checks out the bar down the road. She stocks up on more booze and cigs. Some peanuts. Pretend you're in an old-time bar, Margaret. Then she goes a little further into town looking for factories, gun shops, workshops, anything with anything useful, really. Unfortunately, there's not much here, just a few Zeds and a ransack spiffos. She heads back to Beatrice and reads before bed. Tomorrow is another day. Just gonna sit in this car, have a little cigarette, get some of our exertion up. We're a little bit sleepy. It's just another gigamart. Let's drink a, drink a beer. Again, not so much of a stressful day compared to the other day, but still fairly full on. You relax with a beer. Nice, we'll put the rest in the fridge. Half past eight, it's fine. Good night, Margaret. Good night. Good morning, Margaret. Ah, she's taken, she's finally taken her earplugs out and we can hear the world again. That's nice. Let's have some uh, jelly beans for breakfast. Mmm, yummy. All right then. So there's no industrial buildings here that we can see. Oh, oh, oh my god. Where did you all come from? What on earth? They are just waiting for me the entire time. There's a... There's a person there that I'd love to kill. That Amazonian warrior, you see her with a spear. But that's a bit too many to take on right now. Margaret decides that, in fact, there isn't too many to kill. She wants that sweet loot from the Amazonian warrior. She's not sure where they come from, perhaps some weird cult. But she has seen their zombie bodies wandering before. It's just so foggy, I can't see very far in front of me. Yeah, she's got some makeup. A little feather that I can wear. Frying pan. Juice box, water bottle. Some fish as well, and eggs. Nice. She also wants to check these garages, but they are unfortunately empty. She doesn't bother with the rest, and hits the road again. Margaret takes Beatrice up the road, and runs into a massive obstacle. Basically impassable, in fact. Military, military little outpost there. Oh no, that is not good. Nope. The way is blocked. We really can't get through there. There's far too many cars. Once again, it's demonstrated here why Beatrice is sometimes a bit of a problem. She is big, Come on slow, now, and makes turning around in these circumstances extremely difficult. The zombies slowly gather around the bus. Not like this again. Whoa. Let's try and turn around this way. Beatrice, this is a nightmare. She's moving crazy. Oh my god, really? It turns out, though, that beautiful Beatrice makes up for it by just squishing all of the zombies. Doing a number on them. Nice one, you big mama. Margaret investigates the military tent after clearing out those zombies, finds more military loot, and then goes back outside. The fog has cleared, and it really demonstrates just how screwed they are. They are never getting through that. Yeah, the way is very blocked. Let's just pop back and get some food. Road is blocked. Too many wrecks. Yeah, way, 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 way too many. We're never getting through that. So we have to go back the way we came then, Margaret. Seems like the only option, unfortunately. There's no industrial buildings here either, so I'm not even going to bother exploring. We know what we want. We know what we need. So there's nothing for it. They need to turn back and try to find another way towards the river. Margaret's reasoning is that any survivors are most likely to be close to the river. Food and water are plenty, as well as potentially fewer zombie hordes. If Leslie is anywhere, she thinks he might be there. Her and Beatrice go back the way they came. It's a long afternoon of driving in the rain, and Beatrice doesn't even get up above 40 miles per hour, which Margaret is actually grateful for, because she doesn't want to wrap her beautiful face around a tree. Okay, I think we're approaching that town where we almost had that disaster a couple of days ago. Seems busy again. Mm, horrible, horrible place. 
Maybe try and go this way. See if that leads out. Fire department there. It'd be nice to check out. I really am just looking for factories though, honestly. Margaret really has a one-track mind. Propane, metalworking tools, propane torches, anything she can use to repair and upgrade Beatrice. She really wants to give the old girl some armour, especially after recent run-ins with zombie hordes. She stops at this small farmhouse because it's getting late. Okay. Old farmhouse down here. Blockage up ahead. Let's try down here. Could be somewhere where we can spend the night, I think. Margaret clears the house and finds a diary on the shelf. Hmm. There's a diary here. Some odd folk coming through down the road these days. A couple cars crashed on the bend up there. I just stick to my animals and my barn. My daughter tells me I should pay more attention to what's going on in the world, but I'm just a simple guy. Cows, cow shit, that's more my tempo. wonder if he's still here. The diary entry obviously spooks her, as she has a mild panic attack in the kitchen. What's wrong? What can you hear? Have a cigarette. Windy. Hot, wet evening. Half past nine is perfect, I think. Good night, Margaret.